before the show starts, this is a reminder to all our listeners that the podcast is an open discussion forum and not meant to be used as a source of direct professional help. We at Panic Stations UK would always urge anybody listening to go seek advice from their GP, that is their doctor, a counsellor or a therapist. The podcast is, however, a place for people to share experiences and realise that you are not alone. Due to the subject matter discussed in the shows, some episodes may have explicit language in. I warn listeners as this is meant to be a realistic look at mental health. As such, you may find that some of the guests use some pretty colourful language. I ask all listeners just to freely accept this and to honour the guests that are on the show. It's their journey and it's their freedom of speech and we at Panic Stations UK would never do anything to discourage that. Many thanks and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to all my lovely listeners. My name is Chris Jones and I am, of course, the host to Panic Stations UK. Um, Well, I hope everybody had a very, very good Christmas. I hope everybody had a very nice Christmas. I hope everybody had an even exceptionally better New Year. Um, Obviously, I've been away for a couple of weeks because of the Christmas period. I didn't really think about starting to do a Christmas uh, special because I thought, well, no, I'm not going to do one this year. Maybe... um, Sorry, last year. Maybe um, this Christmas uh, for 2015. But until then, I thought, no, there's no real point. Lots and lots of things have been happening, haven't they? Lots of stirring things in the world of mental health. Uh, Again, this is going to be a solo case. Uh, As I said before, I'd like to do a few more solo podcasts uh, just discussing the uh, recent news and uh, a few things that have been coming up. I do have some wonderful things lined up. Uh, especially in the form of guests. I've got a really interesting guest. Uh, I had a young uh, man uh, get in contact with me. <laughs> I, I like to say young man. He's a sprightly man. He's got to be sprightly for what he's doing. A really nice bloke called Chris Young got in contact with me. And uh, it was regarding his fantastic work. There's uh, For those of you who aren't aware, he's actually doing a, um, a short film. Uh, and it's called Walk a Mile in My Shoes. Now, this film uh, is all about Chris walking around and uh, discussing uh, mental health issues with other people all around um, the the place where he's walking. Uh, there's a website for it. Um, there's a WordPress for it. There's a Facebook page for it. Um, and there's a Twitter as well. Uh, I'm not going to go into the full details of everything just yet because hopefully we're going to... We're trying to organise a nice little one-to-one interview with um, Chris, which I think a lot of the viewers would uh, benefit from, especially because what makes it even more unique is because Chris himself uh, suffers from uh, mental health issues himself. And uh, it's a really inspirational stuff. Uh, I would urge anybody, rather than me trying to describe it on the podcast, I would urge everybody to go to the following website. Uh, I will obviously, of course, make sure this is pushed onto the uh, on the notes section of of the podcast so you can click onto it but if you go to www.walkamileinmyshoesuk.wordpress.com now i'm clicking on the link myself what that does it brings you to a a lovely little page where there's lots and lots of posts um, detailing uh, what's been going on about the short film and a few things that uh, Chris has brought to to the attention. Very interesting stuff. Some really, really lovely stuff um, in the respects of spreading awareness. And uh, that's exactly what Chris is doing. He's, he's very much like this podcast in many respects. What he's doing is going out there and he's spreading the uh, word about mental health and making sure that people are fully aware of what's going on and uh, and obviously 
embracing it but, and realizing that, like we always say on the show, you're not alone. And obviously, there are a lot of people out there that um, clearly suffer from mental health issues, may not have had the courage to come forward, uh, may have felt very, very alone because uh, obviously you feel disassociated from the rest of society because you get a stigma, don't you? So it's very nice what Chris is doing. He's actually doing some much needed good positive publicity taking a positive message literally to the streets uh, discussing mental health uh, with people that he he uh, he meets and um, you can go on to walk a mile in my shoes if you go to the home page uh, you have uh, all the information about the latest blogs and stuff if you go to about um, when you click onto about it obviously discusses there um, some of the the actual things that chris is doing um, even better is let's have a look if i click onto that there's a link regarding gandhi and if i can get to it before sorry the clicking you will be hearing is obviously myself um using the internet to discuss some of the information while i'm talking to yourselves um yeah there is a link that will bring you to a trailer for the actual uh, mini film uh, I think it's available. Yes, it is available on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and type in um, separate words now, walk a mile in my shoes trailer. Click that in and you will uh, get the uh, the trailer for this uh, this short film. I can't wait to, uh, to watch uh, this because it really does. And I'm not just saying this genuinely look fascinating it does look really fascinating it looks very interesting i think it's very ballsy very brave so i say absolutely fantastic to, uh, stuff that he's doing that so uh good for good for chris now um the other bit of big news which i thought was excellent some of you may have um gone to the previous podcast to find uh peter carruthers now, many of you uh, regular listeners will remember that Peter Carruthers uh, came uh, on the show and we were discussing that his, uh, his short films regarding PTSD, uh, yeah, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, and the fact that he was currently trying to do a bit of fundraising for his latest film, which was Unload. I am very, very proud uh, to say, uh, and I get a personal pride in this, simply because of the fact that I think Pete's a really, really good bloke um he's got a lot of time for people i've got to know him obviously not just from the show but from the work he's doing uh regarding unloaded and everything else he's finally managed to finish the film and unfortunately uh i wasn't able to make it because as of the recording tonight he's actually having the premiere of the actual film so i'm uber jealous of all the people who are getting a chance to watch this film tonight and i'm uber uber jealous of the fact that i'll have to wait till uh, i get to, to to watch it at a later date I still can't wait to watch it. I'm sure uh, anybody that uh, sort of uh, familiarised themselves with Peter's work would have been very, very much aware of the previous work he'd done. Fantastic previous work he'd done. And uh, yeah, I, I, I watched the films that he was talking about when he was on the show and they were just absolutely superb. And uh, now... Uh, now he's got a load about to come out and I, I'm really genuinely excited to watch his film so I can't wait uh, so keep your eyes out for that one that will be coming out soon and obviously on the Facebook page of uh, Panic Stations UK I'll make sure people are very much aware uh, where you can see the film or how you can get around to watching the film um, and obviously give big shout outs to Peter and his uh, very dedicated crew uh, that have made this film um, and spreading more very, very valuable um, information through dramatic means regarding post-traumatic stress disorder. Really, really fantastic work. His previous work was fantastic. If you get a chance to watch that, watch it. If you don't, you're missing out. A really fantastic lot. So, so as I said before, we've got uh, we've hopefully got Chris um, coming onto the show uh, as soon as possible we're just finalizing the details and even if he doesn't appear on the show um i'm going to shout about the work he's doing with uh his uh, his short film um because i think it's a fantastic idea you may know him as john cross from the podcast from the after movie diner 
or you may not know him at all. But now you can know him as Miscellaneous Plumbing Fixtures with the release of his new album, Catch Up or Don't See If I Care. Available now on Bandcamp, iTunes, Amazon, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, and wherever music is found. A full 16 new folk blues and rock tracks from this bearded singer-songwriter. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at aftermoviediner.com. For links to the album and to learn more, go to misc plumbingfixtures.blogspot.com or miscplumbingfixtures.bandcamp.com So there you have it. Our good friend John Cross has released an album, and as you quite clearly just heard, I like to plug it for him. So if anybody else has anything they like plugging on the show, uh, things like creative projects, it could be an album, like uh, miscellaneous uh, plumbing fix- uh, fixtures, <clears throat> like, <laughs> put my teeth back in, like miscellaneous plumbing fixtures, there we go, um, or you have a film, like Unload, or like Walk a Mile in My Shoes, um, or a podcast like the After Movie Diner, or Doctor Action in the Kick Ass Kid, or anything like that, please feel more than welcome to drop us a line um, at panicstationsuk at yahoo.co.uk. That's panicstationsuk at yahoo.co.uk. And uh, we'll happily plug it on the show for you at no cost. How good is that? All free advertising. And obviously, as I said before, I'm a big advocate of uh, putting any negativity or channeling any sort of uh, anxious energies that you have into creative output because it's very therapeutic and it's wonderful. And also, you know, it lets other people listen to your work for free. So as we've been talking before uh, on the last couple of podcasts, I've been trying to keep an eye on um, some of the local... Uh, news and the national news regarding um, obviously mental health issues I thought it was kind of important that the show kind of looks at other things that are going on in the wider spectrum of things I'm not just doing the interviews the interviews are fantastic and don't be wrong I love the interviews I've had some fantastic interviews so far and I'm very proud of them but I like to make sure that everybody else is a bit more well versed about what's going on there's a very interesting um article (laughs) i'm not quite too sure how i feel about it personally but i'm not going to knock it because i think fair play to them for trying it and it's also spreading news in their own way they're actually spreading information about it um there's a thing called brufy it's a campaign to highlight mental illness it's uh, the mersey care nhs trust it's launching a national campaign to turn blue monday into brew monday and help end the stigma associated with mental health again Anything that passes on information about mental health and making sure that people are aware of it, fantastic. So the Mercy Care NHS Trust, it's uh, launching a national campaign to turn Blue Monday into Brew Monday. Uh, And it's leading sports and television celebrities that have already uh, shown their support by sharing their brew fees on social media. Now, uh, brew fee, uh, if anybody is unsure of the term, it's a first for me as well, is basically somebody doing a selfie picture of somebody enjoying uh, enjoying a brew in their favourite mug. And it can be anybody. I think uh, some of the people on this uh, particular uh, news report, they've posted some pictures. There's Ashley Giles of Lancashire County Cricket Club. Uh, there's Nick Clegg. Yes, uh, he's adding his support, but I can't knock that because at the same time, and I don't want to get all very political, Nick Clegg has also uh, been involved with some big news where he's been trying to pledge um, getting more uh, mental health sort of funding in there, which I think's all good. I can't really uh, knock that uh, because, again, we're, we're in a state of national climate where financially a lot of services are being cut off and I'm seeing a lot of people 
on uh, many social media networks and support groups regarding mental health issues like anxiety and depression um, discussing the lack of facilities that they can go to so obviously anything that's going to increase the um, finances and the funding um, to continue doing anything that either spreads awareness or obviously gets much needed help to people is a good thing so uh, regardless of any political affiliations and I'm not going to start talking about anybody's political beliefs because they are their own and that's not what this is about um, I can't really knock Nick Clegg um, for that idea um, so that's a good thing so we've had Brew Monday uh, I don't know how successful this will be it's only just started Hopefully it'll carry on. There is an actual campaign on the Facebook site. So clicking on that, if you go into the Facebook search bar, you have Mersey Care Big Brew. Now, if you type that in, Mersey Care Big Brew, um, you will get to a community page and you can literally see lots of different people um, spreading uh, the love, as it were, with selfies or brewfies of them drinking beer, not beer, I wish, uh, drinking tea and uh, drinking uh, other beverages like coffee and uh, posting it onto the page. And again, it's spreading uh, much needed um, sort of publicity. So you, can, you can't knock them for that. So we've had the Mersey Big Brew. The other thing that I've been keeping an eye on as well, which was uh, an interesting one in itself, recently... Um, and again, I don't want to really go into the political side of things, but you've got Miliband saying it's going to end the scandal of neglect uh, for child mental health issues if they win in May's election. Um, now, regardless, again, of whatever anybody's trying to sell you, whatever snake oil they're trying to sell you, like politically-wise, um, it is actually a very valid point. At the moment... We had some uh, official figures come out into the public domain and it shows that the NHS spending on uh, children's mental health services in England has fallen, again, it's the funding issue and finance questions, by 6% in real terms since 2010. That's a hell of a drop if you really think about it. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, much by saying 6% because it seems like a small figure. But when you're talking about national spending, it's, it's a hell of a dramatic uh, decrease, really. Um, so they're saying that the NHS is spending has been protected by the government and there was 150 million investment in services for young people uh, with self-harm and eating disorders. Again, we've covered um, eating disorders on the show and sort of touched upon self-harm. Um, so what they're, what they're trying to say, the care minister, Norman Lamb, is saying that they have actually put legislation for mental health to get its fair share of local funding, but too often children's mental health still loses out. And I'm, I'm going to say, obviously I'm not going to talk about my private life um, work-wise because that's not anything to do with anything really. Um, however, I would argue that obviously children's mental health services, there, there's a massive need for them, um, especially in this day and age. There's a lot more pressures of around in modern life, be it from social media, being it from um, the the way that media portrays what people should be having, like pressure to have things like the latest mobile phones and technology and games consoles, and you have to be on Facebook or you have to be on Twitter and and all these other things. And I think with the influx of options that are available there's also a massive downside because it's a, a really positive thing but the massive downside to that is obviously people can tend to get um drawn down with these these issues uh because they can't cope because it's a lot more pressures with it and i mean before if you were having issues in say school you would go home and at least you'd have the sanctuary of home uh, now you can't really escape from it so if there are issues going on perhaps um, just off the top of my head things like bullying or things like self-image issues and, and, and things like that and you've got people on Facebook and they're putting selfies of themselves and, and then you've got people um, carrying on the conversations with other people that people don't want to carry on talking about or talking to again it extends past the playground it extends past um the sort of uh, the public arena and it, it really kind of hits home even more so you can't even escape it uh, then uh, so there's a lot of pressure on uh, the young community especially with things like 
um, university with the increases in funding, well, the increase in funding, the increases in uh, tuition fees and uh, things like that. So they're, they're trying to increase uh, the mental health, say, neglect. Obviously, puts more funding in the neglected health for children uh, sector. And obviously, as well, um, I mean, every sector needs a bit more cash, but it's kind of a bit more positive knowing about that. Now, before I carry on with a bit more of the mental health news, uh, I'm going to play another track from Cosmic Rays. Now, you may remember I played some of their tracks before and I was very, very impressed with their stuff. And yes, I may be biased because I'm friends with a couple of members of the band. And yes, I am a massive comic book nerd as I have never tried to hide that fact. Um, However, it's a really, really good album and I cannot stress enough that people go out there and actually buy the album. Um, So, if you want to know more about the Cosmic Rays, you can find them on Facebook. Um, Currently, they've only got 462 likes, which I think is criminal. They're a brilliant band. So, if you go to Facebook, on the search bar on Facebook, type in Cosmic Rays, and you will get a chance to uh, listen to some of their stuff. There's some links to... um, to where you can buy their album there's some really nice little things like reviews because they've actually released an LP which is really good and uh, they've also released the Gatefold um, CD and you can actually get all these things from um, www.spaceheadrecords.co.uk if you go there you can actually buy the actual limited edition Gatefold CD uh, which is only £10 which is a bargain it's a fantastic album the front cover is brilliant because it's very very reminiscent of early prog rock and then you can actually get the double vinyl and that's a bargain as well because it's 25 quid and for vinyl records that's really really good anyway without further ado i'm going to play more of the cosmic rays because they are an absolutely fantastic band and i think everybody should get involved with them um and this track is called antiphone it's a fantastic track go and have a listen to it now and then go out and buy the album it's fantastic and follow them on facebook See you in a second.
I really, really love that track. Uh, it's a fantastic album. I really, really recommend everybody go out and buy the album. It's really good. And I'm not just saying this, but it's uh, it's it's just fantastic. You've got some great people involved with it. There's uh, Phil Winslade on guitar. You've got Kevin Dark on bass. Charlie Adlard, yes, the Charlie Adlard who draws Walking Dead. Um, he's on drums. And uh, my good mate Shane Chebsey is vocals. He's got a cracking set of pipes for that lad, and he's uh, he's shown him shown him well. And it's a really good album. So please go out buy it. It's a fantastic album. You can get it from SpaceheadRecords.co.uk, and you can get the limited edition gatefold CD for ten pounds, or you can get the limited edition gatefold double vinyl LP for twenty five pounds. Very, 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 very cheap in my opinion. So go out and get them now. Now, to finish off this episode, because as I said before, I'm trying to make sure that the episodes are a bit smaller, only unless we have an actual interview. Um, I'm going to just finish with a story about promoting good physical and mental health. This is posted from today, as of today, which is the 19th of January. Uh, It's about an occupational therapist called Heather. Now, please forgive me if I say this last name wrong. Uh... Mank Tello, uh, and she's launched a new business to work with care homes, community groups, carers and individuals. It's called Activities for Health, and Heather's specialist area is to promote an activities regime into people's lives to help them keep them healthy and happy. Now, there is, and I am very much believe in this, as I'm currently overweight, and I definitely feel um, mentally and physically in a worse area now than I have been when I've been uh, physically more active. Uh, so it's definitely connected. Uh, I've seen it with other people, friends and family. I've uh, seen evidence of it from other people's um, personal lives who've shared their stories with me on the show. And people who've shared their stories with me on social media sites and, and things like that. About the correlation between a physical healthy body and a mentally healthy body as well. So that it does work. And if you think about it, it's scientific. It's no new age nonsense. Uh, it's it's really really scientific. It's very much um, very factual. Because if you think about it, whatever affects one is going to affect the other. Because they're all connected. So it's definitely worth um, looking into. Obviously promoting more well being. And this is what this Heather Manktello has tried to do. She's based in Chudley, and she's offering a specialist bespoken service to provide training, guidance and consultancy in activities for care homes and organisations which are struggling with activities. And I don't know if anybody has any family members who are of the elderly persuasion. They have some pretty sort of boring times and they really rely on activities and funding for activities and and obviously all the other things uh, to just keep more of an active life and not just sit there and wait for other people so it's good i mean a lot of um homes uh, that have been for residents uh, of, of an elder persuasion uh, they've been looking at things like uh, the nintendo wii and games consoles that actively use motion sensors uh, just to get them a bit more stirred up so they're actually physically doing something so again trying to stimulate some sort of um, physical uh, fitness to promote both physical and mental well-being. Now, she's worked in the last four years as an occupational therapist in a nursing home, and uh, she's been supporting people with dementia, uh, something that I'll be talking about in uh, a later show, physical and mental health difficulties, and also has experience with learning disability and brain injury clients. Uh, Heather said that the Care Quality Commission has always been very complimentary of my activities programme, person-centred activity care plans, and the evidence I generated, so I feel I have something positive to pass on to others. I hope to be commissioned by care homes and organisations to help promote a whole team approach to activity provision and to embed spontaneous meaningful activity into every resident's day as a necessity and not a luxury. The whole philosophy, uh, phys- bleh, the whole philosophy of occupational therapy is that by getting involved in activities and occupation, it maintains and promotes good physical and mental health. Again what I've just been talking about. Now, the catalyst for Heather setting up the business was a shock diagnosis of breast cancer a year ago and followed a successful treatment at a local hospital. So uh, she said that the cancer diagnosis really made her think about the future and what you still want to achieve. So really thinking about things you can push forward and uh, forward-thinking goals and and realising that sometimes time on this uh, earth can be very, very, very finite. So you need to... um, 
to just grab things. And that's something I think a lot of people who suffer from mental health issues, including myself, um, have really not had a chance to do. Because you, you're so worried about stigmas, or you're so worried about how you feel at that moment in time, a lot of things can slip you by. So it's uh, very interesting that Heather said that. So she's decided to try and pass on knowledge, skills and enthusiasm to other care homes, which will ultimately benefit more people than working in just one care home. So it's not going to be easy, as training budgets at care homes and community organisations, again, down to that horrible demon funding, are stretched, but I'm putting myself out there and giving it a try. Um, unfortunately, the article doesn't actually give any links whatsoever to what she's doing but it's interesting to know that there are people out there and i, I think we at panic stations uk uh, salute heather uh, for what she's doing because i think that's a fantastic thing that she is doing going out there and going right this is what i'm going to do i'm going to make sure people are more active it's going to promote a sense of well-being and it does it really does um and and that in itself makes people's lives better if you feel like crap you're not going to experience the best things I, on a personal level, have had moments where I haven't, not so much not appreciated my family, because I have an amazing wife and an amazing daughter, and I'm a very, very lucky man, but I certainly think that sometimes that um, when I have a blue moment, not all the time, but when I'm feeling a bit down, uh, especially about my my weight or th something like that, I do often find myself uh, f thinking focusing quite negatively on that so it's it's interesting that you can have this promotion of physical well-being and of course uh, mental well-being because it is all connected so i'm going to wrap it up now because we're on uh, half an hour and as i said i'm trying to make sure these episodes are a bit more easier to digest in a bit more bite-sized pieces so until next time uh, obviously uh, we've had more information on uh, mental health issues around the nation and possibly the world i'll pass them on for, for next time uh, if you want anything promoting like i said or you want to send an email or you want a guest on the show or anything like that uh, please feel more than welcome to contact me at um, panic stations uk at yahoo.co.uk and until the next time this is me Chris Jones saying, be safe, take care, and remember, you are not alone. Goodbye, everybody. First into the dark with your shaking hands clenched in a soldier's heart. I know where you've been. I know where you've been. You're not alone in this swirling world. You have my hand. You have my hand. You have
have 